Vishnupadaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta <coughs> Swami Niti Namine <coughs> Namas, namas, <coughs> namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvise Shashanyavadi Paschatya Desatarine Vancha Kaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavan Hebyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasarigor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to Ishopanishad. Let's begin by chanting the first invocation mantra and then the first mantra. Om Purnam Adapurnam Idam Purnat Purnam Odachyate Everyone there? Om Purnam Adapurnam Purnam Odachyate Purnasya Purnam Adaya Purnam Eva Vashishyate Purnasya Purnam Adaya Purnam Eva Vashishyate Okay, Nantini, tell us the translation. The time match. The personality of Godhead is perfect and complete and because he is perfect, all emanations from him are perfectly equipped as complete words. I only remember that until that point, Maharaj. Oh, okay. Okay. The personality of Godhead is perfect and complete, and all emanations from him, such as this phenomenal world, are also complete in themselves. Even though so many complete units emanate from him, still he remains the complete balance. Okay, something like that. Isha Vasya Midam Sarvam. Isha Vasya Midam Sarvam. Yadkincha Jagat Yam Jagat. Yadkincha Jagat Yam Jagat. Kittena Chaktena Punjataha. Magridaha Kashasvidanam Okay, who knows the translation? Anybody? Kundalata Radha Mataji, you know? Yes, Maharaj, I, I tried. Please. Everything animate or inanimate? Is within the universe, yes. is controlled and owned by the Lord. Yes. One, one should therefore accept only those things necessary for himself, um, which are set as his quota, and one should not accept other things, knowing well to whom they belong. Yes, very good, right. Okay. So yesterday we were hearing about the final section. Remember, what was the first section in the Ishopanishad? Ram Gopinath Prabhu, do you remember the first section? The first three verses? Huh? Yeah, Isyavashyam. Yeah, but God is the proprietor, the Lord is the supreme proprietor. And, and uh, we, uh, yeah, and following the laws of nature, right? Not taking more than our quota, right? 
And then, what's the second section then, after that, then? Punita Madhaji, do you remember? The second section, mantras 4 to 8. Punita, are you there? She's not here, Madhaji. Oh, she's, she's not, not in yet. She's not in yet, okay. Then, Madhu Tauti Madhaji. The vision of Mahabhagavat. The vision of a Mahabhagavat. Can you tell us more what is the vision of the Mahabhagavat? Ekadvam um, Anupashyata. Meaning? All, all the living entities are one with Lord. One with the Lord? In quality. In quality. In quality, yes. one with the Lord. Okay. But different in quantity. Different in quantity, okay. Yeah, and in that section we heard about the Lord's inconceivable potency. Could you tell us about the Lord's inconceivable potency? In, uh, he is omnipotent and omniscient. Yes. Uh, omnipotent means each of the senses can perform the duty of other senses. Mm -hmm. And omniscient means he knows everything. Yeah. Because he's situated as Paramatma. And uh do, do you remember Tadure Tadvantike? Tadure Tadvantike Tadantarasya Sarvasya Tadu Sarvasya Ba do you remember that section? Is it about antiseptic and prophetic marriage? No, no, it's before that. It's about how he walks and he does not walk. Oh, yeah, yeah. He walks and he doesn't walk. He's far away and yet he's here as well. Right. He's within everything and outside. Yes, right, right. This is the inconceivable potency. Inconceivable potency. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, and then we heard also, as you were saying, antiseptic, prophylactic, shudam apapa vidam, right? That he's antiseptic, he's, he's uh, antiseptic and prophylactic, or he purifies and he's uncontaminated, never contaminated, right? And then the third, then we heard about how the Lord can be. Uh, we heard the, the next section after that, mantras 9 to 9, 10, 11, and then 12, 13, 14. What were they about? Who knows? The absolute non oh, Yeah, the absolute and the relative, right? Yes. Okay. Tanushi, Tanusha Madhaji, are you there? Tanusha? Yeah, do you remember about absolute and relative? Can you tell us more? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, a bit, uh, vidya means the absolute knowledge, which means uh, uh, the scriptures and all. Mm -hmm. And all, and then avidya means the relative knowledge, which means the material education. Yeah. Okay, the... and then uh, we must develop good character, right? You know how to balance the both avidyam and vidyam also. So, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Maharaj? We should have developed good character, right? The yes, Maharaj. The education is to develop good character. Yes, Maharaj. To be humble, to be clean, these things. Okay, that's the first section. That was about knowledge. What's the second section about? Uh, second section is in terms of worship, yeah. Uh, in terms of worship, is we must worship the supreme Lord. Well, that that's the absolute. What? How do the how do they worship in the on the relative platform? Uh, um. Demigods, Maharaj, they yeah. talks about in terms of worshipping the demigods. Right, the demigods and also who else? And also the the 
it talks about the impersonalist and then the three features of the yeah the impersonalist and the demigod the the the, the those gyanis the gyanis cultivate knowledge to worship the impersonal brahman and the demigod worshippers they're cultivating relative knowledge because they don't get eternal liberation they cannot enter the spiritual world they cannot go to the spiritual planet they can get impersonal liberation the jnanis can go into the brahman but they can't go into the vaikuntha planet and they cannot go to goloka because they have no devotion they don't believe in the supreme lord so that's their problem okay very good and then after that then the, the next section this last section which we're reading about right yes, yes Who who's going to tell us about that maybe uh, who, who have we got uh oh, gandharvika radharani maharaji gandharvika would you remember what's the last section now in this ishopanishad Prayers for the revelation of the Lord's spiritual form. Yes, it it's about actually prayers at the time of death. Prayers at the time of death. Okay. Yeah, praying at the time of death. So you're describing, of course, in the prayers, the the devotee prays Haranmayena Patrena. What does that mean? Haranmayena um. Patrena. Sadhaji, do you know? Um, we move the effigies to see the face of the Lord Maharaj. Yeah, Haranmayena Patrena is about the, the Haranmaya is the dazzling effulgence and Patrena covering so that every our vision is covered by the dazzling effulgence, the bright light. And where's the light coming from? Emanates from the. It emanates from the body of supreme personality of Godhead, from the spiritual world. From the spiritual world, from Krishna's planet, right? From Krishna, from Goloka Vrindavan. So that's the Brahma Jyoti, and Haranmayena Patrina Satyasyapi Tamukam is about. I want. We want to see your face, right? We want to see the personal form of the Lord. So in the beginning, the Upanishad was speaking about the Lord in an impersonal way, but now he's speaking more personally. We want to see the face. We don't want to just see the light. We want to go through the light to come to the face, right? And yesterday we spoke about evolution. Do you remember Sakyaras Maharaji? About yes. evolution? Yes, Maharaj. So? We've all, we all evolved from the monkeys, right? No, Maharaj. No? Where no, did, Maharaj. We are where, not creation. We are not pro-evolution. We're, we're not... We're, we didn't evolve, huh? No, Maharaj. You're not just chemicals. No, Maharaj. Where, where, where does your nice personality come from? Not from chemicals. Your good looks are not just chemicals. They're coming from? The Creator's. From the soul, right? Yeah. Because your soul is a part of the Creator, right? The soul. So the soul's nature is full of bliss and knowledge and we get the body. So some materialists, atheists, they say, oh no, we just evolved. We just evolved. We just come from chemicals. So they're saying like that, but we say no, we're all eternal, We've, we exist and the monkeys exist and they've always existed. We don't see any monkeys becoming people, we've never seen it, but they, they say we evolved. But the monkeys are there and the people were also there, but we don't see the monkeys becoming people, so we don't accept evolution. Okay, so we'll go on to the text. We didn't finish this mantra 17. Let me see where we are. We were hearing about the Lord's special relationship with His devotees. 
right? That he has a special relationship with his devotees. Do you remember? How does Krishna reciprocate? What facilities does he give to his devotee? Krishna provides what the devotees lack. Yeah, right. Krishna provides that if the devotee lacks something, Krishna will provide it. Yeah. Anything else? And Krishna preserves what the devotees have. Yes, Krishna will preserve. We have something, Krishna will preserve it. And we say also, Kuntiya priti janehi name bhakta pranashyati. Do you know the meaning? My devotees will never perish. Yes, right. So this is Krishna's pledge. This is Krishna's vow to his devotees. He will protect the devotees. Okay. So we'll go on from where we left off yesterday. All the facilities. Who would like to read for us? Mary? Oh, who's that? You want to read? Is it Nantini? No. Ch who is it? Who? Gandharvika. Gandharvika, yeah? Okay, Gandharvika, yeah, please read. All the facilities suggested, sorry, all the facilities suggested in this mantra can be easily obtained by constant contact with the personal feature of the Absolute, Absolute Truth. Devotional service to the Lord consists essentially of nine transcendental activities, hearing about the Lord, glorifying the Lord, remembering the Lord, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, worshipping the Lord, offering prayers to the Lord, serving the Lord, enjoying friendly association with the Lord, and surrendering, surrendering everything unto the Lord. These nine principles of devotional service taken all together or one by one, help the devotee remain constantly in touch with God. In this way, at the end of life, it is easy for the devotee to remember, oh, sorry, in this way, at the end of life, it is easy for the devotee to remember the Lord. By adopting only one of these nine principles, the following renowned devotees of the Lord are able to achieve the highest perfection. By hearing of the Lord, Maharaj Parikshit, the hero of Srimad Bhagavatam, attained the desired result. Just by glorifying the Lord, Sukadev Goswami, the speaker of Srimad Bhagavatam, attained his perfection. By praying to the Lord, Akura attained the desired result. By remembering the Lord, Prahlad Maharaj attained the desired result. By worshipping the Lord, Prithu Maharaj attained perfection. By serving the lotus feet of the Lord, the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, attained perfection. By rendering personal service to the Lord, Hanuman attained the desired result. Through his friendship with the Lord, Arjuna attained the desired result. By surrendering everything he had to the Lord, Maharaj Pali attained the desired result. Okay. So, are you ready to surrender everything, Gandharvika? Huh? Yes, Maharaj. Really? Come on, you're not ready to surrender everything. I don't believe. Huh? Huh? I'm on it, so eventually I'll get there. Yeah, surrendering everything is very difficult. It's only for, you know, it comes at the, you know, the, the very, if you're real, you have to really do a lot of a service, you have to really get detached. It's really a big thing to do. It's not easy to surrender everything. That's true, Maharaj. Are you able to be a friend with Krishna, to make friends with him? I think I can do that. Well, I, I, yeah, you know, it's not so easy either to be Krishna's friend, you know, to, to actually oh, have... I'm an excellent friend. Huh? Why not? I'm an excellent friend. You may, be, you may friend. be, but <laughs> but it's not so easy to be Krishna's friend. You know, okay. Krishna, Krishna is very careful about who he takes for his friends, you know. Yeah. Okay. 
I don't know if he's ready to take you into it to be one of his friends, you know. <laughs> you may like the idea of him being your friend, but I don't know what he thinks about it. <laughs> you know, these... What do you do, number five, worshipping Krishna? Well, what you should do, we should concentrate from the beginning. Hearing, mm -hmm. hearing and, and chanting. The mm -hmm. first one is hearing and the second is chanting or glorifying the Lord. No? These things, this comes first, you see. If you get the beginning right, you get, the, if you start the proper way, then you can build the, you know, we get the good roots, a good foundation. Then it comes, it can grow up. Then later on, then when you're ready to surrender everything, then you can do it. But before you can surrender everything, you have to know more about who you're surrendering everything to. You have to understand more about Krishna. It's important. And we have to, be, we have to become more attached to him also. So when we do hearing and chanting, then number three comes. We, then number three, oh no, number three, it should be four. They put it as four here, but actually it should be number three. What I meant is remembering. First we hear, and then we chant, and then we can remember. And by rem remembering comes, to remember Krishna like Prahlad, first you have to hear, and we have to chant. Then we can remember. So these things progress, you see. There's a progression there. First we hear, and we hear nicely, then you can repeat, you can chant. And when we hear and chant nicely, then it's easy to remember. And then when we remember, then we will also worship and we will offer prayers, these things like that. But to actually become Krishna's friend and to surrender everything, we have to be very advanced before we can do that. Okay. Yeah, but just concentrate on the hearing and the chanting. And you get the foundation right, then everything will come good later on. So this is the idea. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Um, what if, this is a question, uh, what if you, if one desires to be his servant and go through the process of remembering, chanting, remembering and worshipping him and all, but at the end, we, we are still not um, surrendered to Him. Like you say, by surrendering everything we have to the Lord. What if we don't do that, but we are doing all the other process, processes? Well, it, it says you, you can get perfection by any one of these things. So if you do the hearing very properly, very nicely, then you can get perfection. You don't have to do all the, all the things. You, you just have to do one of them perfectly and you can get perfection. And Krishna loves his devotee. Yes. So we don't surrender everything. We still serve Krishna and also keep all our things. <laughs> but you, if you do the hearing with love, yes. you hear about Krishna with love, you see Krishna is not worried what you keep. He, he, w he wants to know how much you love Him. That's the important thing. How much you really love Him. How much you really care for Him. How much you're attached to Him. He's not worried about what you've got, what you keep or anything. But He wants to see how much you really care for Him. Yeah. Thank you. He knows. He knows you, you have to keep something. You have to need, you need things. For yourself. Yeah. You don't, you don't. And, and we need to sustain him, right, Maharaj? You need to sustain him? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you, be, uh, physically, by serving. By him. your bhakti. He, he needs your bhakti to sustain him. He needs our devotion. It's our devotion which he wants. That's what he wants. You know, it's not the offerings which he wants. I mean, you may give everything to him, but you don't give love, you don't give devotion. That's not good. You know, the story is there. Uh, Duryodhan, the son of Dhritarashtra, he made, he made a big feast for Krishna. 
and he cooked very nice food with the best ghee and everything and he asked Krishna, please come and eat. But Krishna said, oh no, I'm not hungry. I don't want to come. <laughs> but when Vidura invited Krishna to come, Krishna came. And Vidura was, he didn't have much to give Krishna to eat. Vidura only had some bananas. And Vidura was so excited that Krishna was coming to his home that when Vidura was offering, he threw away the bananas and gave Krishna the banana skins by mistake. But Krishna ate them because he saw he's offering with love and devotion. He's my devotee. So Krishna is co conquered by pure loving devotion. It's not what you give him, but it's the mood, the love which we have for him. Right? Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, let's go ahead. So, uh, who is going to... Punita Maharaji, have you come yet? No? Mad Madhu Tosi Maharaji can read? Yes, Maharaj. Um, actually, the explanation of this mantra and of practically all the mantras of the Vedic kings is summarized in the Vedanta Sutra and properly explained in Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is the nature fruit of the Vedic tree of wisdom. In Srimad Bhagavatam, this particular mantra is explained in the questions and answers between Maharaj, Maharaja Parikshit and Sukadev Goswami at the very beginning of their meeting. Hearing and chanting of the signs of God is the basic principle of devotional life. The complete Bhagavatam was heard by Maharaj Parikshit and chanted by Sukadev Goswami. Maharaj Parikshit inquired from Sukadev because Sukadeva was a great, greater spiritual master than any great yogi or transcendentalist of his time. Okay. Read a bit more. Yeah. Maharaja Parikshit's main question was, what is the duty of every man, speci specifically at the time of death? Sukadev Goswami answered, Tasmat Bharata Sarvatma Bhagavan Isvaro Hare. Everyone who desires to be free from all anxieties should always hear about, glorify and remember the personality of Godhead, who is the supreme director of everything, the extinguisher of all difficulties and the super soul of all living entities. Bhagavad Gita chapter 2. Okay, thank you. So, we're hearing about the, the Vedic hymns, the Vedanta Sutra, and the Vedanta Sutra is Veda means.
Okay, translation. Oh my Lord, as powerful as fire, O oh omnipotent one, now I offer you all obeisances, falling on the ground at your, at your feet. Oh my Lord, please. Lead me on the right path to reach you. And since you know all that I have done in the past, please free me from the reactions to my past sins so that there will be no hindrance to my progress. Okay, so like in the previous verse, Mantra 17, remember it was saying, Om Kratosmara Kritamsmara Kratosmara Kritamsmara. The devotee was praying, please remember, all that I have done, please remember what I've done. So the same, he's saying the same here. It's, it's, it says, since you know, you know all that I have done in the past. So please free me from the reactions to my past sins. So like that devotee at the time of death, we will worry like that, that maybe I haven't done enough, maybe I've got some sins, some bad reactions. They may hinder, they may stop us on our path to go back to Krishna. Okay, can you read the purport, Sakiras Maharaji? Yes, Maharaj. By surrendering to the Lord and praying for His causeless mercy, the, the devotee can progress on the path of complete self-realization. The Lord is addressed as fire because He can burn anything into ashes, including the sins of the surrendered souls. As described in the previous mantras, the real or ultimate aspect of the Absolute is His feature as the Personality of Godhead. And His impersonal Brahma Jodhi feature is a dazzling covering over His face. Fruitic activities or karma khanda part of self-realization is the lowest stage in this ending war. As soon as such activities even slightly deviate from the regulated principles of the Vedas, they are transformed into vikarma or acts against the interests of the actor. Such vikarma is enacted by the illusion living entity simply for sense gratification and thus such activities become hindrances on the path of self-realization. Okay. So Prabhupada is describing how the devotee is praying for the mercy of the Lord to help us on the path to go back to Godhead. So Prabhupada describes from the previous mantra, the Lord the, 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 the personal feature is covered by the Brahma Jyoti, the dazzling effulgence is covering his face. So some people, they only know, they only know the Lord as the Brahma Jyoti. They only know the light. 
They don't know there's a person behind the light. They think the light is the supreme. And they, they stop, just like when the first train came, they saw the light. They thought that was a train. <laughs> they didn't know there was a whole train. They thought that light which was there, that was the train. So the same way people think God is light. They don't understand light is only one feature of God. Okay? So then Prabhupada also talks about the fruitive, fruitive activities. In, in other words, people who want to enjoy the result of their work. And they do that by this path called Karma Kanda, the, 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 the Karma Kanda path, the path of fruitive activities. So Prabhupada describes here, this is the lowest stage in this endeavor. This is at the bottom. This is at the bottom. This is not very advanced. Karma Kanda. Many people, of course, do the Karma Kanda, karma, because they have many desires. They do things, they go to the temple and they offer prayers. But Prabhupada describes it, you just make a little mistake. You do a little mistake, a little deviation, and, you, and then everything, then the Karma Kanda becomes ruined. You don't get good result. Instead, you get bad results. You get B karma. Instead of having good karma, you get bad karma because you made some mistake, a little mistake. Maybe you get the mantra wrong or you, do, you forget to wash your hands or something or you're not clean, you're doing something. So like that you can get reactions. This is big karma. So you have to be very careful if you do karma kanda activities. So. If we don't want to get vikarma. Vikarma means sinful reactions. You're trying to enjoy, but we get some. We do something wrong, and we get sinful reactions. So it's a lot of trouble, right? Okay, we'll go ahead. Someone else would like to read? Who's there to read today? Maharaj, I would like to read. Okay. Self-realization is possible in the human form of life, but not in other forms. There are 8,400,000 species of forms of life, of which the human form qualified by Brahminical culture presents the only chance to obtain knowledge of transcendence. Brahminical culture includes truthfulness, sense control, forbearance, simplicity, full knowledge and full faith in God. It is not that one simply becomes proud of his high parentage. Just as being born the son of a big man affords one a chance to become a big man, so being born the son of a brahmana gives one a chance to become a brahmana. But such a birthright is not everything, for one still has to attain the brahminical qualifications for himself. As soon as one becomes proud of his birth as the son of a brahmana and neglects to acquire the qualifications of a real brahmana, he at once becomes degraded and falls from the path of self-realization. Thus, his life's mission as a human being is defeated. Okay, thank you. So Prabhupada is describing about this cultivating the brahminical culture. The brahminical culture means that we want to associate or cultivate the mode of goodness, right? There are th three modes of nature, goodness, passion and ignorance. But the Brahmana is a symbol of the mode of goodness. And Prabhupada describes the quali some of the qualities in the Brahminical culture. Truthfulness, very important that the brahmana is truthful and sense control, forbearance means tolerance and simplicity. He shouldn't be greedy to get a lot of money and he should have knowledge and he should, read, he should study scriptures and he should have faith in God, these kind of things. So Prabhupada said it's not only just being born in a Brahmana family. You see, this is the problem. 
the face, sometimes people think because the father is a brahmana, the son thinks I'm also a brahmana. But Prabhupada said, well, to be born in a brahmana family is good, it's an advantage, but still you have to cultivate the qualities of the brahmana. Just like your father may be a doctor, it does not mean the son is also a doctor. The son also has to go and study and he has to qualify, then he becomes a doctor. So the same way, the father may be the brahmana, the son has to become a brahmana not by, only by birth but by quality. Hmm. So cultivating the good qualities and how, how to cultivate the good qualities? By cultivate the mode of goodness, associate with the devotees and you cultivate the good qualities. When we get initiation and trained by a spiritual teacher, then they train us to cultivate the qualities of a brahmana. So brahmana is like the head in the social body. It's like the head because he, he has good knowledge and he has faith in God so he can help others also. But he should be humble, should not be proud. Okay? All right. Uh, any questions on that, Jolene? No, no question, Maharaj. Yeah? Are you familiar with Brahmanas? Have you heard of them before? Um, to be honest, no. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. Because it's only in a, maybe in the, in the Hindu society where you would hear like this about Brahmanas. But the, the, the idea of the Brahmana is the intellectual class, right? Now you know about that. In China, even during the time of the Cultural Revolution, the, the, the revolution was really against the intellectual class, right? Yes. And so the, 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 Brahman, the Brahmanas rep, represent the intellectual class. In, in, the, in the society, society is divided into four divisions. There's the intellectual class, there's the administrative class, the managers, and then the, you have the businessmen or the mercantile class, and then you have the other people who are the workers. So like that, four sections of society. The administrative class means more like politicians and so on, big government men, people like that. And the brahmanas, they're the intellectual class, they're the teachers and uh, like that, intellectual. They like to study and read and they have, they can give guidance materially and spiritually. So human life is meant to cultivate good qualities and a brahmana is meant to have good qualities. Meant, so we're meant to cultivate good qualities. It's important. Good qualities, beginning with things like, like it's mentioned there, you know, we should uh, be truthful, control the senses, simplicity, knowledge, faith in God. These are all good qualities. Like, so we should cultivate these kind of qualities. By chanting Hare Krishna, by doing devotional service, we automatically develop these good qualities. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Would you consider uh, Sri Prabhupada as a Brahmana? Yes. He was not born a Brahmana, but he is a Brahmana in the sense that he's a, a teacher. And he, he represents the intellectual class of the society. He was teaching the scriptures and he was teaching people to worship Krishna and helping them to have faith in God. He was doing the duties of the Brahmana. So it's just like you who's duty, doing the duty as a Brahmana? Yes, also like that, yeah. 
So we, we do give people what we call, the. you see we have two initiations. The first initiation is in the chanting of the holy name and the second initiation is what we call the Brahmin of, Brahminical initiation where they chant, chant a mantra which is given to the brahmanas. So, you know, we're not, we're not the brahmanas by birth, but in the sense that we have the qualities of the brahmana, we can be considered brahmana. It's more important that you have the qualities than simply to be born in the brahmana family. Many people are born in the Brahmana families and they have very bad qualities, very poor qualities. They may eat meat, they do all kinds of sinful things. But they say, I'm Brahmana, we're Brahmana. <laughs> but in the Kali Yuga, you see, in, the, in this age, birth is not very important. What is important is the good quali the qualities, and, the, and we get the good qualities with the proper education and training, which comes by taking guidance from the spiritual teachers. Okay? Okay, we'll go ahead. Uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, Mary, are you there? Yes, Maharaj. Did you read yet? Okay. Not yet. I want to read now, huh? Okay. Okay. Uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, 6.41 to 42, we are assured by the Lord that the yoga brastas or souls fallen from the path of self-realization are given a chance to rectify themselves by taking birth either in the families of good brahmanas or in the families of rich merchants. Such birth afford higher chances for self-realization. If these chances are misused due to illusion, one loses the good opportunity of human life afforded by the Almighty Lord. So Prabhupada is telling us about some people called yoga brastas, meaning fallen yogis, or yogis who were not yet fully perfect. They didn't complete, they were not fully perfect in their practice of yoga, so they had to come back again, but they come back and they take birth in a special family so that it's very easy for them to again take up the yoga practice. They take birth either in the family of good brahmanas or in the family of a rich businessman. Because in those families they get the chance very quickly in their life, they get the opportunity to, to continue their spiritual practice. It's an opportunity to be born in these good families. If one is born in the Brahmana family or devotee family, then it's a very good birth, very fortunate. If your mother and father is a devotee, and then the, the naturally the children will learn from them to chant and they'll eat prasadam from the beginning of their life. So then it becomes very easy for them to become devotees and to be attached to Krishna. And Prabhupada told her he was born in a family like that. Prabhupada was born in a family of devotees and Prabhupada's t guru, Prabhupada's guru was also born in a family of devotees. So, it's, you know, when you get a good birth then it's very easy, very nat natural to become a devotee. Go ahead, Mary. Yes, Maharaj. The regulative principles are such that one who follows them is promoted from the platform of fruitive activities to the platform of transcendental knowledge. After many, many lifetimes of cultivating transcendental knowledge, one becomes perfect when he surrenders unto beginning, unto the Lord. This is the general procedure, but one who surrenders at the very beginning recommended in this mantra at one surpasses all preliminary stages simply by adopting the devotional attitude as stated in the Bhagavad Gita 18.66 the Lord at once takes charge of such a surrendered soul and frees him from all the reactions to his 
sinful acts. There are many sinful reactions involved in Kamakanda activities, whereas in Kiana Kanda, the path of philosophical development, the number of such sinful activities is smaller. But in devotional service to the Lord, the path of bhakti, there is practically no chance of incurring sinful reactions because a devotee of the Lord attains all the good qualifications of the Lord himself. What to speak of those of a Brahmana? A devotee automatically attains the, the qualification of an expert Brahmana authorized to perform sacrifices, even though the devotee may not have taken his birth in a Brahmana family. Such is the omnipotence of the Lord. He can make a man born in a Brahmana family as degraded as a low-born dog eater, and he can also make a low-born dog eater superior to a qualified Brahmana, simply on the strength of devotional service. Thank you. Thank you. So Prabhupada is describing the progression in the different spiritual paths, that on the bottom, of the spiritual path, who's on the bottom, what kind of yoga are they doing, what process are they doing? Karma yogis. Karma, yeah, karma yogi, karma kandi, karma kandi first, karma kandi is just doing for his own self, he's not karma yoga, but karma kandi, karma kandi is not spiritual, he's simply material activity, but karma yogi is better than a karma kandi. And karma yogi, he's on the spiritual path. He's doing something for the Lord. And above the karma yogi is who? Who's above the karma yogi? The jnanis. Jnana yoga. Jnana yoga, yeah, the path of philosophical development. And Prabhupada said that this may take many lifetimes. After to do jnana. And the per what's the goal of Gyan? What's the perfection of knowledge? Anyone remember what is the perfection of knowledge, the goal of knowledge? Good character, Maharaj. No, no. More than that. Huh? The Supreme Personality. Huh? To attain. What's the, you know the verse in the Bhagavad Gita? Bahunam gyanmanam ante gyanavam man prapajante vasudev sarvamiti samahatma sadulabha. After many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge, he surrenders to Krishna, Vasudev. Such a soul is very rare. So the goal of knowledge, the perfection of knowledge is to surrender to Krishna. But that's very rare. What, happen, what do the jnanis usually try to do? What do they want usually, most jnanis? What are they trying to do? Yeah, they want to enter into the Brahman, to become one with the Brahman. They want liberation, right? They're thinking only about their liberation. And for them liberation means to become one with the Brahman, right? So that's the jnani. But if they go on to become devotee, then that's the perfection, that's the best, to do devotional service. So a devotee, Prabhupada said, devotee, has all the qualities of a brahmana. And so a devotee can perform sacrifices. Sacrifices, just like in Kali Yuga, sacrifice means sankirtan. Kali Yuga Dharma Harinam Sankirtan. The Yuga Dharma, the, the Dharma for the Kali Yuga is to perform sacrifice. And we do that with the chanting of the holy name. That is the real sacrifice. Of course, we also do light fires and chant mantras and throw grains and put ghee in the fire. But the real sankirtan, the real sacrifice is the sankirtan. That's the most 
powerful of all the yagyas in the Kali Yuga. So Prabhupada said, you may be born in a Brahmana family, but he may be as degraded as a dog eater. He may be very fallen. Just like Jagai and Madai, they were born in Brahmana families, they were very fallen until Lord Nityananda made them devotees. Ravan was born in a Brahmana family. Haranyakashipu, Haranyaksha were Brahmanas. They were very, they were demons. But a devotee may be born in a dog-eating family and he may become the best Brahmana by doing devotional service. So devotional service is very powerful. Okay, who didn't read yet? Rukmini Pati Prabhu, you didn't read yet. Okay, Maharaj, I'll read now. Since the omnipotent Lord is situated within the heart of everyone, He can give directions to His sincere devotees by which they can attain the right path. Such directions are especially offered to the devotee even if he desires something else. As far as others are concerned, God gives sanction to the doer only at the risk of the doer. But in the case of a devotee, the Lord directs him in such a way that he never acts wrongly. The Srimad Bhagavatam 11.542 says, Swa pada mulam bajatta priyashya yaktanya bhavasya harir parisha vikarma yakkot patitam katanchit the Lord is so kind to the devotee who is fully surrendered to his lotus feet that even though the devotee sometimes falls into the entanglement of vikarma, acts against the Vedic direction, the Lord at once sacrifices such mistakes from within his heart. This is because the devotees are very dear to the Lord. Oh, jai. So. The Prabhupada is quoting this verse describing how Krishna cracks the heart of the devotee. That the devotee may make some mistake, he may do something wrong, but Krishna will crack him. He will from the heart, because Krishna is in the heart. So he will crack the devotee's heart. Okay. Very nice. Go ahead. Okay, who wants to read? Who didn't read? Maharaj, sorry Maharaj, I will read. Okay. In this mantra of Sri Aisopanisa, the devotee prays to the Lord to rectify him from within his heart. To err is human. A conditioned soul is very often apt to commit mistakes. And the only remedial measures to take against such unintentional sin is to give oneself to the lotus feet of the Lord, so that he may guide one to avoid such faults. The Lord takes charge of fully surrendered souls, thus all problems are solved simply by surrendering oneself unto the Lord and acting in terms of his direction. Such directions are given to the sincere devotee in two ways. One is by way of the saints, scriptures and spiritual master and the other is by way of the Lord Himself, who resides within the heart of everyone. Thus the devotee, fully enlightened with the Vedic knowledge, is protected in all respects. Okay. So Prabhupada is explaining how Krishna helps in two ways. From within, as the super soul, He gives direction. And externally, He gives direction in the form of the spiritual master, sadhu, shastra, guru, like that, these three things. So internally and externally, Krishna is trying to help, trying to take care of us, to help us to go back to Him. No, Krishna wants us to come back home. He's trying to help us. He makes all these arrangements to guide us, to try to help us. We just have to cooperate. So uh, we have to surrender, right? It's all about surrendering ourselves. And so to surrender, fully surrender, 
we, you know, it's not so easy. A little, we surrender something, but to fully surrender, that's what we, Krishna wants, fully surrender. Just like Draupadi was trying to fight, she was trying to keep the sari, and they were fighting, they were trying to pull off her sari, then she just surrendered to Krishna. And then Krishna took over and Krishna became her sari and he covered her body. So that's a, an example. When we fully surrender, then Krishna gives full protection. Okay? Who's not read yet? Who's going to read? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, please manage it. Read. Vedic knowledge is transcendental and cannot be understood by mundane educational procedures. One can understand the Vedic mantras only the grace of the grace of the Lord and the spiritual master. Yasadeva Parabhakti Yata Deva Tata Guru. You know the meaning? Do you know the meaning of this verse? Yasya Devi Parabhakti Yata Devi Tata Guru. You know Take that? the shelter of the one of my spiritual master. Only? You don't know the meaning so well, eh? The meaning is, yes. the meaning, we have to have faith in both the spiritual master and who else? Krishna. Krishna. Yes. So do you have faith in, who do you have the most faith in, Krishna or the Guru? Who do, you, do you have more faith in Guru or more faith in Krishna? Spiritual master. <laughs> oh, really? Why Why you have faith in your Guru? Because I am a sin person, Maharaj. The one to get blessed from the Lord is very far. I have to go. But the spiritual master is very near. He can correct me and he can bless me. Then he can bring me to the Krishna. Well, the Lord, so the Lord, we, learn, we heard the Lord is very near. He's in the heart. He's everywhere. The Lord is everywhere, very near. He's not very, very far. He's very near as well. No, we have to have, we have to have equal faith in Guru and in Krishna, because Guru is representative of Krishna. So we should have equal faith. This, because Guru is representative of Krishna, so you cannot make any difference. Okay. We should have equal faith, both Guru and Krishna. And when we have strong faith in both Guru and Krishna, then, then everything is revealed. Then you'll understand the scriptures that will be given to you, right? By the grace of the Lord and the spiritual master. Okay, go ahead. If one takes shelter. If one takes shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, it is to be understood that he has obtained the grace of the Lord. The Lord appeared as the spiritual master for the devotee. Thus, the spiritual master, the Vedic injunctions, and the Lord himself from within all guide the devotee in their full strength. In this way, there is no chance for a devotee to fall again into the Neither of the material illusion. The devotee thus protected all around, is sure to reach the ultimate destination of perfection. The entire process in that and in this mantra and Srimad Bhagavadam 1.2.17 until 20 explain it further. Okay, okay, so Prabhupada is explaining the importance of having the spiritual master, right? The Vedic, yes. uh, the, uh, the shelter, the, the, the spiritual master, the Vedic injunctions, and the Lord Himself from within all guide the devotee. So, if you get the shelter of the spiritual master, and then if you follow the scriptures, and also we have the, the Lord also in our heart guiding us. So then the devotee cannot fall into the maya of illusion. Maya of illusion, that means what? What's happening if you fall into the maya of illusion? What's happening? Why we fall into the maya of illusion? What's the illusion? Huh? 
that we can enjoy and we, that we, that we can enjoy in independence of God. Yes, right. But we forget Krishna is the proprietor and we start to think I'm the proprietor and we forget our relationship with Krishna, right? So the devotee is protected all around by the guru and the sh sadhu shastra. So the entire process is hinted in this mantra. Go ahead, read more. Hearing, chanting. Hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord is itself an act is piety. Piety, an act of piety. 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 Yeah, pu piety. means means put very pious, right? Punya. Punya karma. Right? Srinvata Srinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. Right? Hearing the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam, hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam is a pious activity. So I said the beginning of devotion is this hearing and chanting about the Lord. When we read the Srimad Bhagavatam, we read the scriptures like we're reading Ishapanishad and going on to read Bhagavad Gita. This is all pious activity. This is punya karma, pious. We get a lot of benefit. Go ahead. The Lord the wants. Want, the Lord wants everyone to hear and chant His glories because He is the well wisher of all living entities. By hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, one becomes clean of, of all undesirable things. And then one's devotion become fixed upon the Lord. Yes, yeah. okay, stage, okay. So hearing and chanting about the Lord, the, when, the benefit is because remember Krishna, Krishna we said is Shudam Apapavidam, right? He's, he's purifying. He cannot be contaminated. So when we hear and chant about Krishna, it purifies, it cleanses all the undesirable things. All the dirty things in our heart are all clean by hearing about Krishna, hearing the glories of Krishna. And then devotion becomes fixed. Okay? At this stage? At this stage, the devotee acquires the Brahmical qualification and the fact of the lower moods of nature, passion and ignorance completely vanish. Yeah, remember I, I said Brahminical, what's the Brahminical qualification? What is, what, what, good what? Good character, good character. Yeah, what mode you have to be in, what guna? Truth, uh, good, goodness. goodness. Yeah, the mode of goodness, right. So the devotee acquires the Brahminical qualification. He comes to the mode of goodness and that means the lower modes, the lower modes, the tamagun and the rajagun, the passion and ignorance, they are taken away. If we still have passion and ignorance, then it means we're not in goodness fully, right? If we still get angry, if you lose your temper sometimes, you get angry and stuff like that, start making a lot of disturbance, you show a lot of passion, or sometimes ignorance, very lazy, dirty, like that. This is a passion and ignorance. It means we're not really in the mode of goodness. So a devotee is very careful to avoid the passion and ignorance. Okay, go ahead. The devotee becomes? The devotee becomes fully enlightened by virtue of the devotional service. And thus he comes to know the path of the Lord and the way to attain him. As all doubt diminish, he become a pure devotee. Okay. Let's end Bhaktivedanta purport to Sri Shupanishad. The knowledge that brings one nearer to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Right? Okay. So, have we got any more questions from anybody? No? 
Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. I do have a I do have a question. I do have a question, but I would like to uh, come on to Zoom. I would like to share screen. Okay. Would you kindly release your screen? Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. I, 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 I've, I've been thinking about this picture since we talk about uh, Kabuta Kashayi Vishnu. Yeah. And um, I noticed that we are here at Bhuloka Earth Planet. Do you think that it is possible that uh, if my practice is not pure and somehow um, if I happen to reach the higher planets, would I be? Would I have a chance to be pointed in the direction towards Vaikuntha Loka? If somehow in this process, you know, being promoted to higher planet, wouldn't it be possible that um, the next after demigod would be Krishna? Well, no. Krishna is far above the demigods. The demigods there in the, the heavenly planets, the higher planets, but Krishna is far above that. Uh, you can, Krishna, you see, this is the material world. One universe is in the material world, but Krishna has his abode far beyond the material world, right? So you want to go to Krishna, you can go to Krishna, you can go direct from the earth planet, we can go. The earth planet is the best situation to go back to Godhead. Even the demigods come down to the earth planet because it's easier, it's easier for them to go back to Godhead from the earth planet than from the higher planets. Oh. The, the reason is because in the higher planets there's a lot of sense gratification and you can become very attached to all the sense gratification. It makes it difficult to go back to Godhead because there's a lot of enjoyment on the heavenly planets. Long life and everything is so wonderful and people are all so beautiful and everybody's, and you know, they're happy. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of enjoyment there. So it's difficult for people to detach from it all, to go back to Godhead. So it's easier to come to the earth planet. And from the earth planet one can directly go back to Godhead. But you go up to the higher planets, on the higher planets you have to wait for the end of Brahma's life before you can go back to Godhead. Okay, um, I was just looking at this photo actually, and I was thinking, um, I'm I'm just one of one particle here at Earth planet. There are so many more universe, yeah. millions of them. Yeah. So small to even qualify to enter my Kunta Loka. It seems impossible. But perhaps the mantra today, text number eighteen. And, uh, and that you have mentioned that it's mood of devotion that Krishna looks for. Yeah. Uh, it's that devo helps. Krishna wants our devotion. It's not our offerings. It's, he wants our devotion. He wants our heart, right? Krishna, if the devo if we give our heart to Krishna, Krishna gives his heart to us. That sounds very convincing. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, Krishna said, I am, I am, I'm, I'm not in the hearts of the yogis meditating on me, and I'm not where, I'm not in Vaikuntha. He said, I'm not in Vaikuntha, I'm not in the hearts of the yogis meditating on me, but I am wherever devotees are chanting my holy name. 
So if we chant the holy name with love, Krishna comes there. And he said, I am in the heart, the devotees are in my heart and I am in the hearts of my devotees. So, and you say, if you look in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also said, you can offer me a leaf, a flower, a fruit, water. But then Krishna said, with love and devotion. He wants said love and devotion. It's not that he wants the flowers and the fruits. He's not greedy for the offerings, but he wants the love and the devotion. That's important. Okay? Maharaj, can I ask one question, Maharaj? Yeah, please. Uh, uh, Maharaj, uh, see, uh, the Shastra says we don't uh, uh, what called go for liberation, but we go for Krishna, Krishna Prem. Can you comment on that, Maharaj? Why we don't go for liberation? Well, because liberation is the beginning of devotional service. Liberation means simply to understand I'm not the body. So if, you, if we understand that, if we've come to the platform of Brahmasmi and knowing Aham Brahmasmi, I am the, I'm Brahman, I'm not the body, I'm a Brahman, I'm spirit soul, then that is the liberation. That is, the, and that is the beginning of devotional service. And actual devotional service has to begin from that platform. But for the jnanis, they're, they're trying to get to that point of liberation. They work very hard to get to the platform of liberation. And for them, that's the goal. But, but what is that liberate? Liberation simply means no suffering, no material suffering. But there's no sense of activity. Liberation, you simply come to the platform of Brahman. What do you do? I'm not the body. What, what, do you, what are you then? If you're not the body, what are you? Well, I'm a soul, I'm Brahman. All right, so what is the Brahman supposed to do? The, the Brahman is a part, it has a relationship with the Supreme Brahman, you see? There's the Parabrahman, Krishna is the Parabrahman, the Supreme Brahman, and we are tiny parts of the Brahman, and we have to connect, that's yoga. So we have to connect with the Supreme Brahman. And that is the real goal of yoga, to, the, to join with the Supreme Brahman. And that's, that's how the love comes about, developing love of God. Liberation is just the beginning of the whole process. So a devotee doesn't worry much, he doesn't worry about liberation. That's there any time for a devotee. A devotee wants to develop his attachment for Krishna. You see, one may come to the liberated platform, but if he doesn't have a connection to Krishna, then he'll fall back. He'll come back again to the material world because he doesn't have any activity. There's no engagement, nothing to do there on the platform of Brahman. You don't know what you are. You simply know you're not the body. What do you do? You don't do anything. You just merge with the oneness, no, no activity, no relationship, you get bored and then we come back. So the scriptures all say like that. Our scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam describe, because the knowledge is not perfect, because you don't have the relationship with Vasudev or Krishna, so you come back in the material world. And we come back to the material world and we take up some welfare activity. You do some, you open a school or you open a hospital or you do some welfare, social work. But that's only temporary, that cannot give, that's not spiritual, it's material. We want to get free. We want to get freedom from the bondage of material life. So that's why we do devotional set. And Krishna cares, he wants Devote, he wants to see us do devotional service. So devotee, you know, when, at the time of death you want to think about how much you have done for Krishna, how much service have you done, how much have you chanted, how much have you offered, how much have you worshipped Krishna. 
that's pleasing to Krishna. Is it clear, Prabhu? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Okay, so we'll finish here tonight. I think that's the finish. No more class eights, right? Do you want to have a class tomorrow? Anybody? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Huh? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, yes. Revision. Revision tomorrow? No. Okay, we'll have yes, revision. Thank you. We'll have revision tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.